What's up guys, Eugene Cousins here, welcome back to the channel. All right, so just a quick update on my pre-planning for the first expedition flight. Now, originally I was gonna fly from South Africa to Mozambique and then head up to Masangir, which is quite so a ways up into Mozambique, but I can't find a land border that'll allow me back into South Africa because of COVID, and it's gonna take a bit more planning, but I've replaced it with a pretty good offering, and that's gonna be to do a, uh, um, a first of a kind. I'm gonna be flying from an international airport to another international Airport Kruger and Pumalanga International Airport is close to me. I'm going to take off from the fly by flight plan to Maputo International Airport located in Mozambique. Now, I can't find a reference to a single uh, other event where a pilot or a PPG pilot has done, done something like this. So, if you guys know anything, know about other guys that have done this, please post it in the comments page and I'm happily, I will happily retract that statement that it's the first of a kind. Any event, it's taking a bit of planning to do this, so I've had to log a flight plan picked the altitude, did all the calculations, uh, and now it's up to selecting the right gear, and for you guys to understand why it's relevant for me to do this flight, and secondly, uh, how I'm able to do it. All right, so relevance of this first expedition flight. Recently, there was this flight in, um, uh, in Texas, the USA, where um, uh, a paramount pilot had a mid-air collision with a small cargo plane. Uh, and uh, I think it's relevant because in the States, uh, PPG is a unlicensed form of, or unregulated form of aviation. And uh, here in South Africa, it's very different. Uh, here it's a regulated form of aviation and all pilots go through a licensing process. And uh, the standard gear that we have to fly with includes certain items which increases our safety. So as far as relevance goes, um, the pilots from the states and from other unregulated territories could take some tips on uh, what is making it a safer form of aviation here in South Africa. And I'm by no means saying that it should change in the states. I'm just saying that simple items that you fly with could increase your safety prospects uh, when flying close to close to uh, other GA aircraft. Okay. First thing is, I'm flying with a cockpit and on top of that uh, is a um, airband radio that can switch to all the different frequencies of the different aerodromes I'm going to be flying, uh, flying to. Now when we do any form of flight near any other GA aircraft, the airband radio is probably the most important form of equipment and it's not just to talk crap with other pilots, it's about... Um, uh, about transmitting our intention, our altitude, our general location, and our airspeed. Now, when I'm flying through uh, Class C airspace, I have to communicate with the air traffic control before I'm allowed to enter that airspace, and they make an assessment whether it's safe for me to enter and fly through the airspace uh, or not. And they do that on the judgment of what equipment I'm using and if I'm able to follow the simple instructions that they're going to be giving. Which brings me to my second point. Uh, I might have a radio, might have good comms, but the software that you use for navigation is kind of important because uh, with paramotors we do not have an altimeter uh, in the aircraft on our lap or on strap to our leg. We just have a cell phone to get information from. So I use Air Navigation Pro. It's a really great app that gives um, flight information using uh, air maps. And it just gives you general information, you know, some really accurate information about uh, where you're going to. You can set it, your destination, the speed you're flying, your track, your bearing. Um, but most importantly, it can set QNH, which is the local pressure that is determined at the specific aerodrome field that I'm referring to or I'm flying into. So the ATC will tell you, uh, set your QNH to a certain uh, pressure and that calibrates you along with all the other aircraft flying or sharing that aerodrome. Uh, if you're leaving that aerodrome and you're transitioning through uh, what's called the transition altitude, that's different from uh, different contents, have diff different transition altitudes, but if you pass through that and you're above it, then you're going to have to switch to what's the standard atmospheric pressure, 1013, um, and that uh, that's when all aircraft flying on the flight plan uh, between uh, long distances, they are all on the same uh, calibrated um, altitude. Now this is very important because if you're using a junk um, altitude software program that you cannot calibrate, then you can find a situation where you are uh, displaying or, or transmitting an altitude um, to another aircraft he then um, foresees the fact that you're at a certain altitude, but you're actually not because it's not calibrated. I've seen situations where there's a couple of 
uh, a couple of, uh, something like 100 or 200 feet difference between um, the, the aircraft that you, you're transmitting that you're flying past because of it being uncalibrated. So that Q&H setting on the iPhone with that Air Navigation Pro is kind of important. Okay, so I'm able to follow instructions with ATC because they're going to give me that as one of their primary instructions. Then I've got a flight plan file. I'm able to uh, uh, to determine what altitude I'm going to fly and that uh, between these two uh, two aerodromes, um, and uh, able to calculate how much fuel I'm going to be burning uh, and that all of that's consistent. So I'm not going to put a a fuel bladder bag inside my cockpit. I'm not going to need it with the F200, Nirvana F200 cross country. I've got 15.5 liters of fuel. I reckon I'm going to be burning around 10.5 liters of fuel on this expedition. So uh, I reckon the fuel burn is going to be fine. I have enough in contingency then to turn back or uh, go to another aerodrome if there's some weather related problem. Okay, other items that's going to be important for me uh, in this flight. I'm only going to be taking a cover. There's a small cover inside here that transforms my air flight into a hiking backpack. So you can shove your glider in there, fold up your frame, and see no difference between a backpack and a paramotor on your back when you're walking around. So when I get there, I'm going to try and do that. Um, you know, some general safety stuff that, that goes with me as a medical kit. Very tiny little medical kit that fits in here. Uh, just, you know, uh, some small stuff in case I have an outlanding and I get hurt. Um, then I'm not, I don't screw around with stupid survival stuff like flints and want to feel like Rambo in the bush. I use a small little propane lighter. It's good to work in, um, in wetter conditions, whereas a, a, a flick lighter it just doesn't work. Um, then I use a Garmin inReach for tracking. So I'm going to send, you know, using the mini is really cool because uh, when, I, when I link this with my phone, it becomes like a super GPS. It's got maps, got everything in it, um, but also I can send, if I, if I uh, select track, so it's on, it's tracking me, then I can send that to an, any other person I want to and I can keep an eye on you for the flight. Uh, if something bad happens, then at least somebody knows about it. It's also got a SOS button connected to it, so if you, you are able to press a button in case of an outlanding and you get hurt, then at least there's some notification to the authorities about it. Okay, so really great device. There's a cost implication to this. Um, you're looking at something like um, I would say something like 10 bucks or something per month, or a little bit more than that, 15 bucks per month. Subscription fee, you can cancel it and only activate it when you really need it, uh, when you're going to go on a trip or something like that. And it's less than a dollar uh, per breadcrumb, a uh, couple of cents that you're paying per breadcrumb that uh, it does the tracking. So every 10 minutes there's a breadcrumb being dropped in the map and sent, you know, if you're, if you're sharing it with anyone as well. Uh, great SMS communicator as well. You can send and receive messages with this as well. Just that cost implication, which you guys got to be aware of. But this and straps on top of my machine. I don't actually wear it on my cockpit. It's permanently part of my machine. Just thought I'd show you guys uh, that I actually use it. Then I always use a big bloody knife, something like a Crocodile Dundee Chopper. This thing's name is actually a zombie chopper. And I wear this inside a hidden sleeve in my flight pants. So don't mess with me when I'm on the ground and walking around. Um, just kidding, uh, on Icarus I learned my lesson, I landed at a spot, my glider went into a tree and I was stuck to try and pull that out uh, line by line, whereas having something like this would be really handy, but I kind of think that the immigration is not going to let me through with something like this. Um, I might spend the night in jail when I get to Mozambique, which is going to save me some accommodation money. Um, but, uh, you know, all jokes aside, I think something like this is going to be a little bit safer. A CRT with a serrated knife can cut branches as well. Um, so I think I'm going to be flying with this. Then the plan is, is I'm going to be flying to Maputo, do the immigration clearance on that side. And then if the weather is okay, playing, playing along, I'll take off again and fly to the Holiday Inn, which is on the beachfront and spend the night and then get back to South Africa by making uh, use of some friends that give me a lift back. Uh, exciting trip. It's going to be something that uh, people can learn, a hypothetical situation where pilots can learn from what it would have been like if uh, PPG was licensed in their, ter uh, their territory and you could fly in and out of international airports. But also I think it's handy from a perspective that you guys can pick up on using airband radios, navigation, how that all comes together in the PPG space. Um, and. Uh, sharing space with other GA aircraft in the, uh, uh, like we're doing here in South Africa. All right, guys, the next video I'll be making, I'll be on the actual flight. So see you then.